Hello, Secrets Readers. This is Carlo LaRosso here at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest, and I am in the Macintosh room with Ron Cornelius, wearer of many hats at Macintosh. So, uh, Ron, you were going to walk us through some of the uh, exciting stuff you have here, so please yes. go ahead. I, I'm going to show you a couple of new models and then give you an overview of the room real quickly. Um, we're introducing our new C2700 vacuum tube stereo preamp. This is mainly a stereo two-channel show here at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest. Uh, this is a, about the fourth generation of this product that's been very popular in our line. We also have a solid state version, which I'll show you a picture, or, or a, we'll view that on the other side of the room shortly. So this uses uh, six vacuum tubes, two mm -hmm. for the moving coil, two for the moving magnet, and two for the preamp function. We also have digital inputs in this, and this is uh, one of our, our first units to use our new DA2 digital module, which we'll zoom in on here in a minute. Okay. And what that module does is it has a variety of digital inputs like USB and coaxial and, and optical, all these things you're used to. And yes, this is the next generation, so it does the higher bandwidths and ridiculous stuff like DSD-512 mm -hmm. or... PCMs. All those, all those uh, yeah, acronyms. Yeah, yeah the, the two gigabit f um, music files. But the reason this might be of interest for home theater people is we've added ARC at a very mm. high level on this. Okay. And the way ARC would work is you could select ARC in the menu. And in our setup menu, we've got a whole bunch of adjustments you can make on this. Do you want it to sync with the TV's power on and off? Uh, do you want it to turn each other on? Do you want them to talk to each other? So if you turn that all that stuff on in here and everything on in the TV and turn the TV speakers off, this gives you the ability to have the world's largest sound bar. Mm, okay. So what you would have, and, and we get this request, by the way, from a lot of uh, customers, and mm -hmm. they, money's not an issue. They simply don't want speakers scattered all over their home. Right. They'll buy a 70-inch TV. They'll have a big, wampin stereo two-channel system, and this would allow them to integrate with that. Got so it. we tested this on a variety of TVs and some you'd have all the features and some you wouldn't, mm -hmm. but it always passed the sound. We went back to where I think they weren't even calling it ARC, the first generation <laughs> HDMI, right. but we found a 10 year old Samsung and, and uh, when we set it up, you picked up the Samsung's remote and you hit on, the TV turned on and this turned on. Wow. Okay. You turn the volume up and down on the Samsung, this is the way it's supposed to work. The TV speakers are off, so the Macintosh volume goes up or down. Ooh. Conversely, if you left the input in this setting, mm -hmm. I could pick up the Macintosh's remote mm -hmm. and turn that on, and that would turn the TV on automatically. So it goes both directions. Oh, okay, I see. And, and it's, com it's completely uh, transparent to the consumer, but I don't think many dealers may be used to setting up HDMI, hmm. ARC. They're used to doing it in a sound bar, mm -hmm. but in a sound bar, nobody uses the other inputs. Right. So that's a piece over there that you could do that with that, right. that is very powerful and very wonderful sounding, has Bluetooth and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But back to this, so, so if the signal comes in PCM mm -hmm. over HDMI, that's not a problem. If it comes in Dolby, multi-channel, that's not a problem. If it comes in DTS multi-channel, that's not a problem. It will convert wow. that to high band Mm -hmm. stereo digital and then to analog. What kind of sampling rate are we talking about? For typically those formats are typically uh, 24, 48. 48, right. Just like it would be on a, on a Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. It could be higher, this mm -hmm. doesn't care. If, okay. it, if it's 24, 192 or 24, 96, that'll all work too. That'll, okay. But I don't think you'd find that typically Okay. in that software or in the broadcast. Okay, fair enough. I know mm -hmm. in our home theater processors, we have a mode where it, it, where I can watch it on my computer, it'll show the incoming data rate, but it's usually 2448 or 2496. Makes sense, cool. So, well, so this has applications uh, both ways, and uh, it's kind of cool. Very nice. And of course, it looks like the traditional Macintosh, cool blue and green and awesome goodness that a Macintosh is. Right, like all of our modern units, our thrust in the last 10 or 15 years has been uh, engineered for increased single to noise ratio, and this has that too. Very nice. Where we use a split chassis design, where it's actually two metal boxes, where all the power supply and digital's down here, and all oh, the right. analog's up here. Very nice. If you want to zoom in on that over here, sure. I will pull this speaker aside, and you can kind of see that module. It's, all right. it's black on the back there. Let's see here. So someday, if something really crazy comes along, then you'd, we'd be able to sell you a, a, a different module, and you'd upgrade mm -hmm. the software to operate it. Nice. Maybe. Very nice. Cool. Never fear obsolescence. 
Yep. Oh, and there it is. Right. Okay. Here we go. Yep. Nice. Now, what uh, is it? Um, what sort of chipset is it? Is the is the two module using now, or is it is it a custom design thing for Macintosh, or is it a? <clears throat> we're basing this on the high end DSS eight channel okay. DAC. So in the stereo mode, we're using four DACs per channel. Oh, okay. In a complete balanced mode. This is this is this is shooting for ultimate. Uh, performance, right? If this is just a two-channel DAC, this is the same architecture we would use. Perfect. And the only difference between this and maybe our most expensive uh, two-channel DAC would be just a mirror image, to, uh, fully balanced everything on the audio side. Gotcha. Gotcha. So very cool. Real quickly, let's uh, come over here. This mm -hmm. is our main demo system. Hello, Julie. How are you? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> this is our main demo system, which is our. Our uh, line array speaker are 1.1 Ks, and we're running that on our uh, 70th anniversary 2152 tube amplifier with great effect wow. and using the matching C70 vacuum tube preamp. These will be sold through the end of the year, and they will ha be, have the logo on it where it shows 70th anniversary. So those will continue through uh, January 1. Very nice. Very nice. We have one other hot model over sure. here on the other side of the room. Okay. And this was a, a late entry to the show. Walk with me, readers, to the new model. <laughs> and this is a little different look. This is an MA352. It's a high-performance integrated amplifier. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like Macintosh, but different. Kind of carries the chassis design of the older tube amps mm -hmm. on the side where you've got the logo. And this has two tubes for the phono and two tubes for the preamp. This has a moving magnet phono section, but we have a lot of features in this. Now we have a smaller model called the MA252, which was a huge seller for us last year to bring new people into the Macintosh family. Hmm. So this is more of what they're asking for, more power, 200 watts a channel into 8 ohms, 350 into 4. Mm -hmm. It's got uh, switchable um, output 1 and output 2. Output 1 will control will connect the preamp to the built-in amplifier. Output two is a set of jacks on the back, and you might want to turn that on to say power a subwoofer or an amp a larger amplifier to power speakers in another room. Mm -hmm. And you can switch those on and off on the remote or the front panel control. Nice. And we build in a lot of adjustments here. So you can do these adjustments, equalizer on off, Mono stereo, output one, that, that would be this on, okay? Mm -hmm. Output two would be the other one, or you could have them both on, or you could have them both off and just use the headphones. Very neat. Wow. Each input, like all of our preamps, by the way, can go up or down 6 dB in relation to each other, so you can balance the volumes. Mm -hmm. Meter lights on, all meter right. lights off, mm -hmm. tube lights off, tube lights on. Excellent. And what was the power per channel again on this? 200. 200, wow. Into 8, 350 into 4. Nice. Display auto off. So that's on right now. Mm -hmm. you can, always on. When I, when I shut that off after 30 seconds, the display goes out anytime you give it a, a remote control command mm -hmm. or a command with the knobs that pops back on to show you what you're doing. There we go. And, and again, this has pass through. Mm -hmm. So we can do the pass-through just like we did on the other piece. This would be slaved to your home theater receiver, your home mm. theater uh, uh, preamp processor, and the receivers always need to have the 12-volt trigger mm -hmm. and, and left and right audio out. Wow. Okay, And then you, we set up pass-through on this, and that's automatic. You turn on the home theater receiver. This turns on. It says pass-through. None of these controls work mm -hmm. because it's slaved. Gotcha. So it's two volts in, two volts so out, unity coupled. Boom, you're off to the races. Yeah. So this will be shipped at the end of the month. It's Excellent. Really cool. and, and what's the, uh, do, do you have a, a price on this yet? Or uh, I, think this is, I think it's about 6,500. Okay, this. very nice. Wow. So no one need fear about incorporating really high-end tube gear in with their home theater system if they want to. Well, small tubes, the preamp tubes really, they can go 10, 20,000 hours. Mm. They're, they're, not, they're not like the big output tubes I showed you in the other right, amplifier right. there that have to work hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. I mean, they're consumable, but at a much slower rate. Right, right. And, and we, we don't engineer uh, a tube beyond its design voltages. 
So we're, we know how to do this. I mean, it's okay. what we've done since 1949, 70 that years, you gotta get it figured out. That goes without saying. Yep. Yeah. So this real quick is the same feature set as I mm -hmm. pointed out on the C2700 over there, only this is solid state, mm -hmm. uses the, the eight band tone controls instead of just bass and treble. Mm -hmm. Some of our customers like transistors only, some of them like tubes, mm -hmm. and we make both. We're kind of like Burger King, you can have it your way. <laughs> <laughs> or you can have them combined like oh. this. So the, when you do a, do a hybrid piece, this is the most painless way to have tubes. Mm. So you have tubes in the preamp and solid state power amp. You get kind of the best of both worlds. You get some that tubosity sound. Right. Plus you've got the, the, the high powered amplifiers. Yeah, no, it's, it's gorgeous stuff. It's really, really nice. So that's an overview of our room at RMAF. Hope everybody, if you're local, come on by and have fun. Thank you so much for your time, Ron. It was really great. No problem. Thank, Thank you. you.